Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Ahsoka Series, Merrick, Professor Hu Yang, and General Hera Syndulla. And is it Merrick? Maroque? It seems like I heard it both ways in the show, but we're used to that with Star Wars, right? Chewbacca? Han Solo? And I've been excited about getting these because it adds to the Ahsoka shelf. I enjoyed the show. But for those of you who care about packaging, oh my god, the windows are back! Finally Hasbro has listened! Window, no window whatever. Got your Star Wars logos, got black series, have the color coordination for the Ahsoka series. Warning choking hazard small parts. There's a small part. There's a small part. I guess when you pull the blades out there's a small part. And what do we not do with small parts? We don't put them in our mouth or any other opening on our body. I don't know why my hands went down. Here's the mural on the sides, nicely connected all the way across. Makes a hell of a display if you are men on card. On the back, there's the artwork again, and then bios for each character. All kinds of warnings just in case. If you do put them in your mouth, Hasbro is not liable because they just covered the package with warnings. It's your own fault for not reading them. On the side, color coordination again, a little window on top, more window on bottom. There's some legalese barcodes. Let's go with Merrick first. Oh, and look at that. It is exactly what I was expecting. And more accurate than I thought it was when it was first revealed, but we'll get to that. First though, there is a whole lot of nice sculpting going on here. Very knight-like while keeping that inquisitor feel. Well, the lightsaber skews our thought process that way, but even without that, it's just kind of like, oh, it's a knight type guy in the Star Wars universe. Must be some type of bad guy. Have some evil looking knee pads with the upturns on the outside. Down to the shin guards with this seam line running through and I got some shiny glue like stuff right there. It's not sticky. It's just, well, I mean, wait, it's matching on both sides. The shoe, the foot part, tell me this guy shouldn't be sitting on a horse with a big old lance. Forearm guards coming up to a heavy seam, a heavy guard up around the elbow, coming back here to this sticky. I almost think there should be a communicator over here. That's what I'm trained to think when it comes to armored guys. Hand guard with some extra detail down around the knuckles. This going up over the shoulder is another medieval flourish that makes me think he should be sitting around a round table. And there's another ding right there that has some shiny to it. I don't know if they did that on purpose to accentuate that. Maybe? I don't know. Armor made by Tesla? But there's the Star Wars stuff that I come to expect. On the back, not a lot going on. Got an indent, got a hole. Then there is the head. Sir Laser Lot or something. I just really, really like this design, but can he see? Which comes down to a paint problem. Those are slits right here, and I feel like there should be a dark wash or just painted black to make it seem like they go through, you know? So the dude inside can see out. You thought I was gonna gripe about all this rust, huh? And the lightness of the armor. I believe that this was revealed about the time of Maroque's first appearance. And there he was kind of shadowy, and it felt like, oh, he's got a very dark armor. Then they showed the figure and Boom, kind of a bright gray and that orange just sticking out. But then a later episode had him flying in a ship with some good lighting on it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's pretty damn close to what we're seeing on the figure. I mean, yeah, the oranges could feel a bit more natural, a bit more blended into the overall color scheme, but it doesn't feel wrong now that I've seen more of Merrick. And now that I have this in hand, with all this cloth showing, one, he can sit, two, he's very agile. Even with armor protecting eh, most of the vital points, you gotta have some crotch armor. But the armor itself is where I have a problem with this figure. This is an overlay for the upper torso, and then this is sandwiched in between the upper torso and the lower. There's a ball joint in between, but this floats. And the problem there is you get crazy with it. Oh, you're not gonna do it on camera now. Before I got on here, it was all, ah, I'm going over here and I'm going over here and I'm coming around here. And I would look down and think, God dang it, I gotta straighten this out again. But maybe I've worn it in now. Oh, there you go. Look. <laughs> It's doing it. I don't hate it. It's just something to be mindful of when you're posing around. I guess it's the same for the cape, the cloak, the shawl, whatever this is. The material it's made out of is a bit thin. You can see through it if you stretch it out, get up close to it, but that also helps it just lay naturally. Well, I say naturally, as natural as 112 scale soft goods can be. Oh, you see the armor piece come around? I don't even remember doing that. I do like the ragged edge down at the bottom, but then it goes around, the, well, okay. 
<laughs> it's just a band sewn in there. Then they have bunches sewn in in a couple places to make it go smaller around the neck. That's all fine and dandy. It's not terrible. <laughs> you notice that pause? If you just throw it on here, it, it's gonna look weird. You gotta kind of work it into the neck. I like to get it kind of around and drape down over the shoulder just a bit for that asymmetrical look. I, what the hell? I didn't even do anything. So yeah, not a deal breaker. Not at all. In fact, I kind of like it, but you got to work at it just slightly. While we're looking at articulation, there is a, now it's in the way, there seems to be a dumbbell joint up at the top of the neck with a ball going down into the body. Can look up, look down, so much tilt, side to side. Dumbbell joint at the shoulder. My first instinct was forward and back, it's a butterfly, but then, oh, it dropped down. For the shoulder bell, it's got that ring that goes around the peg in there, so it's not free floating, it goes with the arm as you turn it, but then it also flexes up out of the way for this and here and then it's so smooth, it's fluid. Oh, and I guess I just spooled the rotation all the way around at the arm and then hinges up to there. Hinge and swivel at the elbow does come past 90 and then rotates in and out. And look at that, it's actually a ball joint at the wrist. So you have in and out and up and down for a weapon wielding hand. I like that. Dumbbell mid torso does get a little bit of crunch. Some mark back, tilt, tilt, rotation. Ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, goes back, goes out. Something else I've noticed with the newer figures, they've taken out the thigh swivel, but added some cutout around the hip ball. That gives you some slight rotation up there. Hinge and swivel at the knee, comes up to about 90 and then rotates. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward, oh, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, comes with his Inquisitor-like lightsaber. Have some red blades on both sides, and then this mean looking guard coming around with a few spikes. The blades do come out, and they have a corresponding cutout for these guards on the side. So you can't just turn it around and stick it in. You gotta get it lined up, put it back in. But it comes out, well, one, it's a lightsaber, so you can have them just holding the hilt, but there's also this peg on the back. A minute ago, while I was taking pictures, I shoved this into his hand. I was like, what in the hell? It will not go in there. You got to make sure that peg is facing out when you put it in his hand. I know that's common sense, but hey. Returning to the hole in the back, this plugs in like that, and then you can kind of drape the cape over and display like that. Pretty sweet. Hu Yang gives me that droid happiness, but also brings along some of the current droid problems we've been having with Black Series. Don't get me wrong, the sculpt is magnificent. I absolutely love every little nook and cranny and edge and angle and little itty bitty details here and there. Even in the neck, there's these little open sections on the back coming around to these angle out pieces that works with an accessory. The iconic droid midsection with the wires hanging through to give some flexibility, I guess. And then, you know, make the connections from the head to the legs, like mid torsos usually do, even in humans. Utility kilt or apron, I guess, with pouches hanging off the back for all kinds of storage, lightsaber parts and pieces and extra batteries. There's silver on the back of the legs and on the outside of the knee and here and coming down to the exposed calves, which is a cool visual, you know, when you think about it. Usually it needs to bulge out, not this, it goes for the muscle and tendons underneath. Except it's robot muscle and tendons. Cool little feet, emphasis on little, inside of the arms and then the hands and the chest and it has this popping, I don't know what that is, and this flathead screw. This too, this is just sticking up randomly like this out here and then this up here. Well, I know that comes down and flips down over the eye and stuff, but it adds an asymmetry to it that I enjoy. It's not overwhelming. It's not like, man, he's got 16 arms on this side and a thumb over here. It's just little itty bitty things to catch your eye. A little extra detail in the eyes like in the show. I wish, well, okay, the show was a bit more emotive, but I like the gold here and the little bit of sculpt inside. The lines up here in the blue and coming down on the side of the face, just jowls. He's got 
chops. The overall color scheme, it doesn't quite fit what we saw in the Ahsoka series. I mean, if you shadow it up and try to dull down the color a bit, I can get it to look closer, but in regular light, it's more of a uh, caramel latte frosting look? Or you could say closer to the Clone Wars animated series color scheme. It's cleaner than the cartoon, but not as whitish silver as the show. It hits the spot, it satisfies my need for a Hu Yang on the shelf, but I also think of it as an amalgam of animated and live action. My big gripe though is the detents in the ankles and the size of the feet and maybe the detents in the knees too. You put all those together and it's a recipe of trying to get it to balance one way or the other. You get the feet going forward and it clicks into place and then you try to get it back between the detents and there it is, you got it. Oh, what's happening? Is it gonna stay? Of course it is, because we're on camera. Oh, my diva figures. But then you try to get into action poses and bring the foot around and here. Dang it. <sighs> Whoa, out of the package. This knee pad is bent over to the side. I'll have to heat that up, straighten it out because it's just the way it was packed. You can see this one's straight and they're just plastic on top of the leg. There's a gripe, there's something that's wrong and it's shown on camera. Oh, I just did this, shadowed out half the face, but the eyes are still picking up the light and reflecting it back. That is cool. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with the ball down at the bottom. There's up, there's down, tilt. Looking for someone to train to the left, to the right. Peg coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around, and then a hinge comes up to there. It is a bit tight, but it doesn't feel like it's in a break. That feels really, really solid. Meanwhile, this is a tiny little peg coming down to the hinge and swivel at the elbow that bends up to 90 and rotates in and out. Swivel at the wrist, hinge in and out. Going old school with the torso, it is a full sculpt down to the waist where there is a ball joint on a peg. A little crunch, a little arc back, some tilt, some tilt, some rotation. What you got behind that apron? There is a ball going out to the hip because of the flexibility there. It comes up to 90, goes back, goes, man, not so out again. Got droid problems. No thigh swivel, but there is rotation on the ball. Hinge and swivel at the knee, comes up to 90, rotates in and out. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, hits right there. Forward, hits right there, not a lot of range. And then a front facing pin for a rocker that hits on the ankle bones right there sticking out. Pow, pow. For accessories, Hu Yang comes with a data pad. Is that the screen or is... Yeah, that's got to be the screen, right? But I like this metallic blue that's down here and on the back and then on this side too. That just pops, especially against the overall color scheme of Hu Yang. He's kind of dulled down. It, well, he's shiny. And then there's this blue up here, but this, that just sticks out. I think this is a training lightsaber hilt. Oh, is this the one that just shoots out light, kind of? where they swipe through. Very thin for Hu Yang's grip though. It's very floppy unless you take this thick part up at the top and get that between the thumb and forefinger. That gets it in there tight, where he's not gonna drop it and feed the carpet monster. Then there is this battle droid backpack. It's not a battle droid backpack, but it reminds me of one, or a folded up battle droid. Have a peg, have a peg hole. Pretty self-explanatory. You plug that in, and these bigger hinges up top cradle right into the sculpt on his back. Very unassuming in neutral position, but then you can swing this up, and there's three to get this to come up and over, but it doesn't really become a hand. It just stays flat. Now I understand that they wanted it to stay like this to be more compact when it's on the back. But out here, it looks more like he's gonna f flip a pancake or it looks like a small skeleton hand or something. It's definitely neat, but I wish there were three more of these with some kind of blade on them and there was a grip on these. It would make this figure way more dynamic, even though in my head most of the time he's just standing there being condescending. But Hera was the one I was wanting the most. She may not been the main character of the Ahsoka series, but she's a main character 
in my heart. I liked her all through Rebels, and I liked how she was portrayed in the Ahsoka series, so I wanted a plastic representation of that. Plus, it's just a kick-ass design. She's a pilot, she has the bomber jacket, there's the fur up top, the orange pants really stand out, but then you have the black boots to make it more militaristic. But this, this is my focal point. The brown leather type headgear with the goggles up top. Okay, that's not the focal point, but it really accentuates that bright green skin. This stands out on a shelf, in a crowd, in a scene. <laughs> Your eyes are just drawn. There's also the leku, the head tails, same green, and then it has some design work coming around the back. Very faint, very subtle, but it's there. A little sculpted fur around the collar, and then the leather texture to the jacket, and you have this very nice print on this side, and on this side, and on the back, and then the Purina logo. Hey! Even the Rebellion has to have sponsorships. Or the New Republic, I guess. The maroonish red running down the front against the brown undershirt, the slightly lighter brown than the jacket, and mm, is it the same color as the headgear? Have the silver of the buckle and the rivets and this right here. Oh, and right there. Hey, I love little extra detail like that. And I just realized the color of the belt and the holster matches those straps on the, I'm pretty sure they match the stripes. The flight gear pants have the pockets on the side, the padding down at the knees. It harkens back to X-Wing pilots. And then some pretty plain black boots, which is perfectly fine because all the extra detail going on up here. It, it's just, <laughs> again, I really like this design. I probably would have never used the feature, but the goggles are a separate piece, but they don't rotate down in front of the eyes. That would have been, uh, some extra mile, but I'm also okay that it doesn't do it. I do wish there was a little extra paint to the face though, because in the show her lips were redder, and then she also had, is it blush on top of the cheeks? Kind of a reddish color, just to break up all that green. I think that would have brought the likeness even closer, which it, it's not bad. Right here, it's hard to see it, but then you turn right... Oh, there she is. Okay, there's Hera from the show, and then oh, it's kind of... Nope, there she is again, right there. I may try to pastel the cheeks just a bit. Going over articulation, once again, dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball down at the bottom. I forgot to mention on the other two, but these necks do have a tendency, after some posing and stuff, to kind of get off to the side. So if it does that, you gotta straighten it up, hold it in place, and then put the head where you want it. These and the collar and then the back of the head kind of gets in the way of up, but nice down. So much tilt though. Space well, where? The shoulder, like Mayrock, is a dumbbell. And because of the jacket, we can see exactly what's going on this time. There is a cover piece, bottom of the dumbbell down there, and then the shoulder up here. Some back, some forward, some up, and some down. Diagonal, diagonal back, forward, just everywhere. Rotates around and then hinges up to about right there. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, does come past 90, then in and out. And just like Marag, Hera has a ball jointed wrist too. So trigger finger hand rotates up, down, in, out, diagonal, all around. I want my Star Wars figures to all have ball jointed wrists, especially when they're sleeves, because it just works. Again, older school black series with a ball at the waist, but because the pants come so high up, they get in the way of crunching an arc back and, well, okay, tilts a little better, but yeah, because of this, that high in the back too, yeah, it's pretty high up there. Ball coming out to the hip, rotates up to here. There's some flexibility to the holster, doesn't get in the way, goes back, goes all the way out. The rotation is on that ball joint. Hinge swivel at the knee. Oh. Pass 90, then swivels. Hinge at the ankle, goes back when you flex it, goes forward, then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she gets a live action version of her little pistol from the animated series. The noisy cricket. Easy enough to give it the old push and twist into her hand, holds it very nicely, or you can store it in the holster. And there is this strap with this itty bitty peg on it, and then the hole, but I have not been able to actually get that to plug in. It acts like it wants to, but 
it just kind of smashes against it and then falls right back out. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Size-wise, Mayrope stands at about six and an eighth. Hera is about five and three quarter. And then Hu Yang is almost six and a quarter. Which is pretty much perfect for Hera next to Ahsoka and Sabine. Speaking of Sabine, I picked up a second one where the eyes are painted better than the first. It's not quite perfect inside the sculpt, but a lot closer than the one I had. More than that though is the helmets. Remember my first one did not go all the way down over her head. Her chin still poked out from here and it was very loose. The second one I got, you can see the difference, right? It's taller and narrower. So it does cover her head and it stays on. See, there's her chin sticking out and it's loosey goosey. It doesn't stay on. My new one, boom, goes on, covers the whole head, doesn't fall off. And I tried heating this and dremeling it out, tried to make it fit. It would not do it. So this one's going on the shelf and this one's going for future custom endeavors of some kind. Hmm. Anyway, Hera. Here she is with younger Thrawn and then the Black Series Rebels Hera. And then here she is with the Obi-Wan Series Obi-Wan Kenobi and then the Rebels Series Chopper. Here's Merrick with the Ahsoka Series Sabine and Morgan Elsbeth. And if you missed my short, these are the Marvel Legends MCU Scarlet Witch hands with the Loki Series Old Loki power effects. And here's Hu Yang next to the Amazon Break Apart C-3PO that came with Chewbacca and the recent HK-87 assassin droid. And it's in an action pose because it doesn't stand straight up and down. We'll try it. I'm gonna put them up so you can get a, a scale shot next to Hu Yang, see how tall he is if you really, really want to. But I'm gonna do this and this and this and this. <clears throat> Now that I have it in hand, no, these are not the same cloaks. It has the same rips down at the bottom, but the tops are sewn different. So at the end of the day, three fine additions for the Ahsoka shelf, but I do have a pecking order here. Like I said earlier about Hu Yang, it fills that spot. It definitely satisfies my need for the character. It's a great sculpt. It has presence. I like the design, both from the show and in action figure form. I understand that in some cases, Star Wars doesn't leave you a lot of leeway when it comes to real world application. Some of those joints are tiny on screen, Screen. And when you try to interpret that into action figure form, yeah, it can be a bear. It's kind of a catch-22, I guess, but I feel like they could be better. Maybe it's the detents messing with me or something, but it's not fun to stand up. Maroque, I love the design even more. Well, because Hu Yang wasn't quite a surprise. It was nice to see in live action, but it's almost a direct translation. I mean, there wasn't a lot of changes except for maybe color scheme. With Merrick, it's something new, it's something fresh, even though the overall feel is old, almost ancient. And I get it, it turned out to be kind of a bummer for some people, but for me, it didn't need to be a callback to another character or something. We have enough of that in Star Wars. Here's this animated form full of smoke. Brr, bad guy to fight. I'm perfectly happy with this. But the winner for me here is Hera, because it's Hera. It's almost like Hu Yang. It's a direct translation. It pulled right out of the animation. Sure, the facial features were different and the shape of her head and such, but when it came to the overall design, the clothing, the costuming, <laughs> ripped right out of the cartoon. And the action figure looks like that. Again, could have used a little bit more photo reel to the skin tone to liven it up a bit, but for the most part, the tampos, the paint jobs on the patches, and the jacket details and everything, yeah, I, I, I really like this figure. So yeah, that's all I got. I'm extra rambly today for some reason, but um, new Star Wars figures. Like I said, I haven't been buying all of them. I've been cherry picking. I'm just grabbing what I really, really want. What you really, really want. I wanna, I wanna. I didn't get all the Obi-Wan stuff because while I liked it, I didn't need all that. Same with Andor. I really enjoyed that show, but people, you can see the difference, right? Look here, you have robots, you have knights, you have alien types just out in the galaxy fighting the good fight or bad fight, depending. Andor was political intrigue. It was a bunch of people in clothes and that is cool. That adds to the overall Star Wars mythos and I enjoyed it. But when it comes to toys and my favorite parts of everything Star Wars, it's the magic, the, 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 the colorfulness, the powers, the 
starships, that kind of stuff. And Ahsoka played right into that. <laughs> Dragged me right along with it. And that's where my action figure focus is at the moment. So. Oh, and things like the best figure released this year, Black Chrysanthemum. Because he's a big Wookiee. Fun things. Again, I like the other shows, but fun. Fun. <laughs>